Hey, this is Brock Lemires. We are continuing our study of embedded systems design. We are looking at the UART serial peripheral on the MSP430. And last time we looked at how we could actually send a character up uh, the UART, out the UART port and have it be received by a terminal window in CCS and display the original uh, character. And we learned that whenever you use the data type character, you encode the, the actual letters of the American alphabet or English alphabet in an 8-bit unique code called an ASCII code. And so in this video, we're going to extend that and we're going to start sending a string to the terminal and actually type out a sentence. Okay, so let's take a look at our setup. So first of all, let's use the standard 15 115 200 baud and so to do that let's choose sm clock as our as our uh, baud rate clock into the baud rate generator we'll do a prescaler of 8 and then we'll do a modulation setting of d600 and what that's going to do is that'll put us in low frequency mode and then configure the second stage modulation to d6 and that'll dial us in as close as we can to 115 200 and then what we're going to do is we're going to get in, we're going to do this as a loop. So we'll, we'll define a string and then we'll go through the string letter by letter and we'll drop it in the transmit buffer, wait a little bit, drop the next letter, wait a little bit, drop the next letter, wait a little bit, drop the next letter, wait a little bit. And we'll do that until we're done with the characters in the string. We're going to do this very manually, meaning that we're actually just going to use delay loops to provide the amount of delay between characters. And then we'll use another larger delay to separate the strings. And that's what we'll do. Okay, so let's let's fire it up. All right, so CCS project, file, whoa, what's that? File new, and we'll go CCS project. And what we got here now is, let's call it, we're in C, we're doing UARTs. And let's go ahead, TX4, this is our fourth TX example. And let's do sending string, string. Okay, got that, boom, boom. All right, now we're sitting here, we got this. Let's go ahead and nuke that little comment header. And let's set this buddy up. So remember, first step to setting up the UART is to go ahead and put it into software reset. So set up, let's see, set up UART A1. And we, have, we wanna use A1 because that's what's connected to what they call the application uh, UART port. And that's what is actually goes up the USB cable and can be tied into a terminal window. And so what I want to do is I'm going to go into the UC A1 control word zero register, and I'm going to set uh, the UC software reset bit. And that's going to put uh, UART A1 one into software reset so that we can configure the rest of the the uart and the ports function without accidentally triggering a shift okay so nothing erroneous will come out okay let's go ahead and, and set up the baud rate clock so i'm going to go into the ua uc a1 control word register zero and i'm going to go ahead and do a bit uh, wise and with a or bitwise or with a mask called uc ssel which is the clock source select and I'm going to choose SM clock. So now this is going to be VR clock get is SM clock, and that's one one megahertz. But we're going to then do a prescaler of so you see a one baud rate register, and I'm just going to stuff an eight in there. And so that's the prescaler. So that's prescaler equals eight. And then I'm going to do my modulation settings. So I'm going to do UC A1 modulation control register. And I'm going to put uh, 0xD600. Very common mistake that people make when they set this up is they'll do this. And I've done it a couple times uh, in videos that I had to throw away. But when you do this, you're only you're sending the D6 to the lower eight bits of the of this modulation register. And that screws things up considerably because you sometimes you, well, you don't have the modulation set up and, and then it just screws everything up. And so you got to remember that you're setting the upper eight bits of the modulation control register. So we'll set up modulation. And this SM clock is, we're ultimately trying to get 15200 baud. Okay, so that's, that's important so we know exactly what we're doing. Okay, so anyway, there's the three settings to set the clock that we need. Now let's go ahead and tell the, uh, the MSP430 that we're going to be using the UART transmit 
on port four bit three will be uh, UART A1TX. And so I have to do that using the port four select registers. So I got port four select, that's a register one. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a bitwise clear, bitwise and in order to clear bit three. And then what I'm gonna do is, let's see if I can get a little more room here. I'm gonna go port four SEL zero, and I'm gonna do a bitwise or, or to set bit three, and yeah. <laughs> so there it is, that's how you do it. Nothing left really left to do. And then what we gotta do is let's turn on the uh, IO. So let's turn on all these little drivers so that they're not in low power mode. So I go to the power module five control zero register and I clear the lock L low power mode five bit. So this is turn on IO. And now we're done, so we're ready to take this out of reset. So we go ahead and write a zero to this bit. And so I come over here, I'm gonna change that, copy and paste and change that to a bitwise and with a inversion on the mask and I'm ready to go. Okay, so this has set up my, the UART A1 system for transmit. And let's see what, it, let's remind ourselves what we did. We chose SM clock. We prescaled it by eight. We modulated with this, this setting out of the out of the data sheet. We chose the the UART A one TX function for port four bit three, which is the one that the transmit UART that goes up the cable on the application UART. We went ahead and PM five CTL zero. Okay, and okay. All right. Now here's where it kind of gets fun. We are going to let's make a variable that is a string. So car message and what i'm going to do is i'm going to put in a string let's go like hello 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 world okay and we'll go a space in between it. so i'm going to put that so now when i do that think this is pretty awesome it this is the syntax to set up a string in c so what it's going to do is it's going to say every letter that is provided within double quotes is going to be converted to its 8-bit ascii code and it's going to be inserted in memory and you will declare a location of memory for each of the characters in here. So this is gonna set up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 bytes of memory, okay, that will be initialized with the 8-bit uh, ASCII codes, okay? So I just set up a string. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a looping structure, which is gonna go through and go like, grab the first character, dump it in the transmit buffer. Grab the second character, dump it in the transmit buffer. Grab the third character, dump it in the transmit better buffer. Okay, so we're gonna set up a looping structure and let's go ahead and do a while loop. And so this will go forever, okay? And we're gonna need to define a couple variables. So first and foremost, let's create, we're gonna have two delay loops, okay? So the two delay loops, one is gonna be, and we're gonna do four loops to create the delay and one will be, a, not that much, uh, and what we'll do is we'll separate each letter transmission by just a little bit of delay. And this is very not quantitative. <laughs> this is just like a little bit. And so we kind of know that uh, when we do a for loop and we let uh, the loop variable count to a thousand, it gives us about 60 milliseconds delay. Uh, so let's do something that maybe counts to 100. So we're only gonna get a couple milliseconds of delay between these. And we'll send a character, delay a little, send a character, delay a little, send a character, delay a little, send a character, delay a little. And the, what that'll do is when we look at it in the transcript, it'll go like, hello world all at once, sort of. Wait a little bit, then it'll go hello world again. And so the string will, it'll be very apparent that the string is being blasted at a faster rate than, than it repeats. So we'll see, hello world, hello world, hello world. Okay, so to facilitate that, let's go ahead and uh, create two variables, two loop variables, A, I, and J. And then let's, we're also gonna create a, uh, basically a position variable, which is going to be an index for the string itself. And so the way that you access the individual characters of a string is you would say something like this. You'd come over and be like, uh, message, message uh, zero. And, and you provide the index to it, right? And then what happens is that this will select this first, uh, the first letter in the string, and then index, so that would be H. And then this one, message one, would be, you know, the E, okay? So we're gonna do something where 
we're gonna have like a variable that looks like this. So the variable is position and it'll take on an integer that starts at zero and goes up to the maximum value, which I believe is gonna be 11. And I'll show you how you can do that without worrying about keeping track of it. And so that's what this position variable is gonna do. It's gonna march through. All right, life is good. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. First and foremost, let's, let's walk through the string. So I'm gonna create a for loop. And I'm going to use position as the loop variable. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start it at zero, which is going to be indexing the H in the string. And I am going to keep incrementing position. Okay, so I'll go over here. This is going to be the, uh, the bound or the range. And then what I'll do is I'll come over here and I'm going to go position plus plus. And so what this does is that each time through the loop, it's going to increment position. So it'll be like zero, that's the H. One, that's the E. Two, that's the L. Three, that's the L. Four, that's the O. Five, that's the space. <clears throat> and then the range now is we basically have to figure out how many characters are in here and then subtract it one from it and then that'll be the maximum value. Oh, actually, no, we'll, uh, we'll do less than the maximum value. Well, instead of counting it, we can use a built-in function within C that says, that's called size of. Okay, so I'll go less than size of, and notice how it turned purple. That means it's a built-in function. Okay, so this is in a, in the the standard library of the C, uh, whatever library it is, whatever. And I can put message right here. And what this does is it takes an array or a string, and it says I'm going to go in and I'm going to count how many items are in the string. And so in this situation, it looks at what message was. It was initialized with these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And this will return 12, okay? And so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, as, least, as long as position is less than 12, keep looping through this for loop, okay? And now, as it goes through there, think about this. The first time through, position is gonna be zero. So, uh, so what I can do is this. I'm just gonna drop the first character into the transmit buffer. So I go to UCA1 and I go to the transmit buffer and I literally just put into it message with an index of position. And that's the first time through, it'll be message at index zero, that'll be the H. Now what I wanna do is let's put a tiny little delay, just a little guy. So let's do the four and we'll use I as the loop variable for this one. So four I is equal to zero and then I is less than, I'm gonna do a hundred. So it's gonna be pretty snappy, but <clears throat> it's long enough that I kind of tested it out. I know it's not gonna send the next character before the prior character was shifted out, okay? And that's that's what really what we're worried about when I'm trying to put this delay in here. Not This isn't the best way to do it. We'll learn how to do flags and interrupts at a, some other time. But for right now, this is just gonna be the delay. So we'll go over here and go delay between characters, okay? All right, so that's that. And now think about what this, it's gonna start off and it's gonna come in here and it's gonna go, here's a for loop that will basically execute 12 times based upon these conditions. Starts at zero, increments one each time through and it'll go up until it hits the size. So it'll go through and position will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. Each time it'll, the variable position will be used to index the individual character within the string and we dump it into the transmit buffer. So that's how we go H E L L O space. Even space has an ASCII code. But then after that, we'll take a little delay and then we'll do it again. So this will go, hello world. After we're done with that, let's put a larger delay. So let's do our standard delay. But since we have another for loop, let's use a different uh, loop variable. So let's use J and let's do this. Let's delay it quite a bit. So 30, let's do like 30,000. And then we'll do J, and let me do J plus one this time, just, just to show you different ways of doing it. Not, a, not terribly interesting, but anyway. Okay, and then this is gonna be the delay between strings, okay? And so that's it. So now what I wanna do is let's fire this buddy up and let's uh, look at it on the terminal. So let's go ahead first, let's, uh, let's debug it and clean up our typos. Okay, which typos do we have there? Da, 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 da. Okay, so now it isn't running yet. 
And what I want to do is let's get the terminal set up. So I'm going to go over here and the default settings are fantastic. They're 115, 200, uh, eight bit frame, eight bit data size, no parity, one stop bit. So that terminal is now sitting there and it actually had some leftover stuff from before. So let me, let me clear that. Uh, there's a clear in here, clear terminal. Okay, so I flushed it all out and it's sitting there waiting. So now what I'm gonna do is hit run and then we'll wait for some characters. So look at hello world, hello world. Look at this, look at this. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> look at that, boom. Hello world, look at it, it's just pumping. Now, it, first of all, this is awesome, this is awesome. But look at how jerky it is. And the reason, remember I told you that it's so jerky because you're sharing the USB cable between two COM ports. One COM port is used for the application UART, which is what we're, we're sending ASCII characters up that are received by the terminal, but we're also sharing it with the debugger. And so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the debugger. Remember when I, when I hit stop, it doesn't stop my program. It stops the debugger. So now the debugger COM port gives up the USB cable. It's not shifting, switching back and forth anymore. And so now my program's still running. But you know, when you stop it, it's like, I don't want you to use my terminal anymore. Well, guess what? I can bring the terminal back just by going view terminal. And now look at this. Look at this. Look at that. Boom, 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 boom. Hello world, hello world, hello world. Man, that is hauling. <laughs> Let's get that. Oh man, that is awesome. That is awesome. I mean, it's, it's yeah, there's nothing else to say. Hello world, awesome. Okay, you did it. So that's how you'd write a string. And now you can start seeing like, holy cow, you can start un understanding how these computers actually like print out messages when you do something or start printing out like little menus and stuff like that. But anyway, you did it, holy cow. What you did was you actually created a string on your MSP430 and you sent it up to the terminal on a computer over UART. All right, nice work. And as always, support my channel by subscribing and